G'day guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to wire off a set of lights on the back of the 76 here using the Adventure King's reverse light wiring kit. Now on the back of the 76 here, you'll notice I've already mounted a set of 3 inch work lights from Adventure Kings. But this wiring harness will work with pretty much any light out there that takes a Deutsch style connection. Now inside the kit you'll find the wiring harness itself, you'll find two extension cables as well as one Y splitter. Now the two extensions and the Y piece we're going to set aside for the minute because we're going to focus on the main part of the wiring first. Now on the main wiring harness you'll find the relay, you'll also find the on off switch, You'll find the positive and negative wires which go directly to your battery. There's a fuse on the positive of course, and you'll also find the Deutsch plug. That's all there is to it, so let's get stuck into it. Now your first step is to figure out where you want to mount your relay. Now on most four wheel drives and vehicles out there, you'll find along the engine bay here, most of them have threaded holes which you can basically just mount the relay to with an extra bolt that you might have laying around. I've already done that with the smart wiring harness for the set of driving lights on here. So I'm just gonna use the exact same bolt hole and just mount it right next to this one to make things super simple and easy to get to. Okay, so the relay is mounted, it's up and out of the way. The other thing you need to keep in mind when you are mounting it is keeping it as close to the battery as possible so that your positive and negative wires can reach the terminals on your battery without having to extend them or anything like that. Now the next step is we're gonna hook up the positive and negative wires to the terminals on the battery, but to make sure nothing's live, I've taken the fuse out first, just for add a bit of safety. So next up, you'll find the switch and the Deutsch plug. Now it doesn't really matter which order you do this in, I'm just gonna run this through the firewall and mount the switch somewhere. Then we're gonna move on to the Deutsch plug. So to do that, I'm just gonna get these apart, make sure they're not too tangled up. And then run this through the firewall as neatly as possible and make sure it's all out of the way. Okay, so the grommet for my firewall is on this side, on the driver's side. I'm gonna feed these wires through, but before we do, I'm gonna take a photo of the switch and where each wire goes, just so we don't get confused when it comes time to plug it all back in on the other side. Now here's a handy tip when you're feeding uh, some wires through your firewall, is you can get an old steel coat hanger and straighten it out. You can plug that through the bung on the firewall and then reach through from the inside and pull the rest of the wire through. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but this is probably one of the easy ways to do it. So the wires are fed through the firewall. Now we just gotta refer back to our phone for the photo to see which wire goes where on the back of the switch here. And then we just gotta figure out a way to mount it to the dash. Okay, so now we're moving on to the Deutsch plug. Now there's a couple of ways you can run this to your rear lights or even if you've got them set up as side lights or whatever it might be. One of which is running it down through the engine bay, across the chassis, all the way to the back of the car. Now if you're gonna do that, just make sure you're clear of the exhaust so you don't heat up the wires and melt them. In my case, I've actually got a pretty nice run here where I can go up the side of the snorkel here, across the roof rack, right to the back, and that way I don't have to worry about getting close to the exhaust. I'm also gonna add a little bit of perforated tubing just to give it a little bit extra safety. And again, these are completely waterproof, so you don't have to worry about it being up in the elements. Now this is where the two extension cables come in handy. Because they're about two meters long each, that gives me more than enough room to reach the back of the 76 here, which is quite a long vehicle. So if you've got a long van or a four-wheel drive, whatever it might be, these are incredibly handy, and I'm sure I'm gonna have plenty left over by the time I get to the end. So we're just gonna plug them in one by one and get all the way back to the lights at the back of the car here. And as I mentioned, I'm putting a little bit of corrugated tubing on. You don't have to do this because it's already very well insulated, but I'm doing it as an extra precaution. As I said earlier, the kit comes with two extension cables. I'm only gonna need one because this roof rack is actually short enough that I can get to the back just using one straight into the Y splitter, then directly to the lights at the back. Now before we start tidying everything up and making sure the wires look nice and neat, we're gonna chuck the fuse back in, then we're gonna turn the switch on and make sure the lights are working just as they should. So 
Sweet, so those are working perfectly, super bright. Now we're just gonna tidy everything up with cable ties and make sure it's all nice and neat and we're pretty much done. How good is that? In under an hour, we've got a set of rear lights wired in with the Adventure King's rear light kit. It's on an on off switch, so we can use them as we please as reverse lights or even camp lights. Incredibly easy to do, and you can do it in your own shed.